Born Marina Lambrini Diamondis on the 10th of October 1985, Marina's birthplace wasn't exactly the typical sort of place you would expect a young girl who knew she wanted to be mega famous ever since she was nine to be birthed in. She was born in the sunny mining valley of Bryn Mawr, Wales, which has a population of less than 5,000, and moved immediately to the even more remote Abergavenny in the village of Pandy, which has a population of less than 400. Luckily, she wasn't to be alone and grew up with an older sister as well as a free-spirited Welsh mother and a strict academic conservative Greek father. Her parents split when she was only four, her father packing off to Greece, and even though he would try to visit Marina and her sister whenever he could, which with 90s plane prices wasn't a lot, Marina has recalled missing her father throughout her childhood and his absence affecting her quite a lot. Nonetheless, she still experienced a simple and happy childhood, her mother not having a lot but still loving and treating her children whenever she could. Luckily, Marina wasn't a girly girl and didn't need a lot of expensive clothes and accessories, instead spending most of her time with boys outside, playing football and wearing Manchester United t-shirts. However, this early French with boys wouldn't last and would only worsen her social alienation and problems connecting with girls. She was already a bit of an outsider. Part of it is I'm half Greek and I moved around a lot and maybe the other half is that I'm a weirdo. But her problems connecting with girls would worsen her social situation, Marina only finding friendship with females in her early 20s. As a young child, she wasn't musical and had no real interest in it, though she did try her hand at songwriting age 7, which apparently went so bad that she didn't try again until she was 17. Teen. However, Marina does recall a musical household, with her mother playing records by Dolly Parton, Enya, George Michael, and her dad sticking to his classical Greek singers and church choir records. Their choice in music often reflected their parenting habits, with Marina's dad bringing her up to be very questioning of the commercial world. He comes from such a traditional background and he's always been very proud of Greek art and culture, so things like McDonald's are the Antichrist. After finishing primary school, Marina attended the prestigious Haberdashers Monmouth School for Girls, which wasn't great because she still had her problems with making friends with girls. She enjoyed history and literature, which came from her childhood love of writing, and it was at Haberdashers that she really gained the confidence to chase her musical dreams, after being supported by the music teacher who made her feel like she could do anything, even though she did skive his choir class. She had known she wanted to be famous since she was nine years old. I started writing songs about six years ago, when I was 18, but I knew when I was about nine that I was going to be in the public eye. I know it sounds like I'm saying, honey, I was always going to be a star, but I just had this weird feeling and energy inside. I can't really describe it, but I knew 110% that this was what I wanted to do. But it took her until she was about 14 years old to really be confident in her desires, because that was when she discovered Britney Spears, a childhood idol who guided the young Marina to chase her dreams. Britney Spears is a big influence, huge. I think people thought I was joking about that for a long time, but when I was a teenager, there was a genuine connection with this sweet girl, who also had this very side that people didn't really want to accept. However, it was still something she had to hide because of her father's traditional conservative views. I definitely got the impression that Pop was evil and Britney Spears was evil. When she was 16, Marina made the decision to take up her father's invitation to go live with him in Greece for two years, feeling very bored and unstimulated in her current situation. In Athens, she attended the private English language St. Catherine's British Embassy School and worked hard on her international baccalaureate, showcasing the ambition that Marina has always had throughout her life. She would wake up every day at 2am and study till 7, go to school, come back and do more revision and repeat for two years. I'm a very, very disciplined person, and I don't mind sacrificing normal things like friends and relationships. It was in Greece that Marina formed a very strong relationship with her grandma, who was actually incredibly influential in Marina's career, because she was the only person that Marina told about her musical dreams, and luckily, her grandma supported her. They would sing Greek folk songs together, and her grandma supported her so much because she never got the opportunity to do anything like that herself. After she completed her international baccalaureate, Marina said bye-bye to Greece, flew back to Wales and moved with her mum from their bungalow in Paddy to Ross and Wye, Herefordshire. Her older sister had moved to London by then to study medicine. Marina worked at a petrol station for two months, the best paid job in the town. Taking all the shifts she could and much to the surprise and disapproval of her parents, she packed her things after two months and moved to London, where she was going to finally try and make her dreams come true. At this point, Marina's ambitions still weren't looking that bright. 
right. She didn't have a solid voice, she didn't know much about music, she had no connection to anyone in the industry, and she hadn't even written any songs. But luckily, by the time she moved to London, she had finally started a bit of songwriting, dipping her toes in slowly by starting with wordplay and creating lyrics. Marina was obsessed with becoming a singer, almost as if it was a disease, and decided to train herself up so she could compete with the best of them. She ended up studying four different courses at four different universities over four years, and didn't receive a certificate from a single one of them. She initially went to stage school to study dance, but left after three months because she felt fat and worse than everyone else. She then became a vocal major at a vocal tech college but stayed there for even less. There was a short trip to LA where she tried to clear her mind, but when she came back to London, she enrolled at yet another university on clearing to study music history. I did a year, got a first, then I transferred to another uni just because I was a bit bored, but I thought this is a rubbish course. So I switched to pure composition at Middlesex, which was really classical, but I stopped after two months. Never liked to stay for too long. Through all that time, Marina was attending theatre and pop auditions that she found in the stage magazine. After reading that the Spice Girls were formed after answering an ad for a new girl group in the stage. She was also inspired by Madonna and JLo who also attended a lot of auditions when they were trying to make it in New York. I was like maybe I can get into this by going to auditions and getting in a music video. She even once dressed as a male to audition for a new boy band in the hope that maybe a music exec would be amused and take some interest in her. She was actually stopped at the door by a security guard but still managed to hand over her CV and a headshot and sure enough she did get a call from an a &R the next week, inviting her to come into the office. In some magazines she says she was too nervous to attend the meeting so she didn't go but in one magazine it says that she went to the audition and timidly warbled a Whitney song which is when the a and interest quickly waned. Whatever happened, Marina flopped every audition and went through rejection after rejection. She would go to an audition, get rejected, go home and cry about it while binging on sweets and then would go to another audition the next day. After initially starting out wanting so desperately to be a big producer's pop puppet, Marina changed tack when she was 19 after hearing the simple and imaginative music of Daniel Johnston, thinking, if he can do it, then so can I. That's when I started to produce things myself. Even though I wasn't great on the piano, it's about emotion. If you have heart, people connect to that. The rejections would actually turn out to be the best education ever for Marina's career as she went from wanting to be just another megastar to wanting to create something meaningful. She started listening to more music to expand her taste beyond bubblegum pop and was then inspired by Blondie, The Distillers, Patti Smith and Tom Waits, all artists that would later influence her songwriting and production style. After managing to write a few songs on the piano, even though she still had no idea about music theory and how to write a song, she started producing her own instrumentals on GarageBand, pressing whatever button sounded good and eventually made a few of her own demos. Around this time, she was still sending out 50 emails a day, trying to get a record deal and was still attending auditions, but her interest in trying to find someone else to start her career quickly started to wane after she found that she could do it all herself. She creates a MySpace page in 2007 and sets up her name as Marina and the Diamonds because while well, my surname means diamond in Greek, at the time it wasn't some big decision, I just thought Marina and the Diamonds sounded really natural. As the years went on, I started attracting fans and thought maybe the Diamonds could be the fans. It sounds really cringy but if I didn't have fans, I wouldn't be able to do this. So this is kind of placing the importance on them. Her MySpace bio read, I'm Marina, you're the diamonds. And in that same year, she puts out her first EP, Mermaid vs Sailor, and actually manages to sell several dozen copies. One copy ending up in the hands of indie pop impresario Derek Davis, who owns the boutique record label Neon Gold Records, which has helped launch the careers of artists such as Ellie Golding, Gautier, Churches, Christine and the Queens, Charlie XCX, Tablo, Vampire Weekend, and Lana Del Rey. Talking about his first impressions, he said, she just had something that really resonated with me. Even with the quite limited production of her early bedroom demos, she had this powerful yet vulnerable vocal and writing style that didn't sound like anyone else at the time. The day she quit her last uni in 2008, Derek contacts Marina asking to manage her and help her career. He manages to set up an opening slot at Gautier's upcoming tour, who back then still wasn't very big and it seems like things are going good for Marina. But after six months, she felt like nothing was happening so they parted ways and then signed a deal together the next week. 
After going through 14 meetings with 14 different record labels, Marina finally signs up with 679 Records under Warner in October 2008 because she felt like they were the only record label that didn't want to impose an image on her. She starts going on writing session trips to New York and LA and a lot of the songs written around that time are really great at showcasing Marina's mental space back then. She wrote Mowgli's Road after being signed saying, it's about there being two roads in fame and the industry. When I wrote it, I didn't know whether I was meant to be some kind of weird indie artist or a big pop thing. At the end of the day, I just thought, you can be both if you want. I'm a left field artist, but I want to be really successful. You know, I think celebrity culture and sexuality in pop music is really important, but I want there to be an alternative for people. And Hollywood, this is who I was. Hollywood infected my brain and I really valued the wrong things in life. But I changed dramatically. This obsession with celebrity culture is really unhealthy. I don't want to live my life like that and I don't want to be a typical pop star. She released her first single Obsessions on the 14th of February 2009 and her first EP, The Crown Jewels, on the 1st of June. She plays at a few festivals that summer and the media starts gaining an interest in this weird quirky girl who made music that sounded like Kate Bush. The late 2000s and early 2010s were a great time for feminist pop girls who were a bit quirky and made special quirky pop music. As much as Marina would tell the press that she wasn't obsessed with celebrity culture and she just wanted to create something meaningful, deep down she was obsessed with the fame. I think the likes of Shakira and Lady Gaga could be my peers. Everyone's like, you're doing so well. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I need to do so much more. After releasing Mowgli's Road as a buzz single, which gets her a little good press across the pond with both Kanye West and Perez Hilton, Marina releases her lead single, Hollywood, on the 1st of February 2010, which reaches number 12 on the UK singles chart. She releases her debut album, The Family Jewels, on the 15th of February 2010, which had impressive UK first week sales of 27,618 copies and debuted at number 5. She got rave reviews and went on to win the Best UK and Ireland Act at the MTV Europe music awards later that year but her album didn't do that well in the united states and that was what marina really wanted she would express her ambition to finally take over america with her next album electra heart which had a much more current sound speaking about her then plans for the future marina said every year instead of doing the album format i'll just do a six track ep so i'll have a constant flow of music and i'm never overexposed because i don't spend all my time doing photo shoots and interviews i think it'll sustain my career as an artist as opposed to a pop star i never really wanted to be a pop star. Where do you think Marina's next album will take her? Is The Family Jewels your favourite Marina album? Do you wish she had made it in the United States? Let me know in the comments down below, like the video and subscribe if you're new. It's called Numb.